Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. And today we're gonna take a look at the Element 3D Render Engine. So what it is, is an OpenGL based renderer that was specifically designed for Element. And it was designed to be fast and look really good. So let's take a look at some of the different features. First of all, it works with After Effects lighting. So we can actually move the lights around and you can get some instant interactive feedback. So it's great if you're trying to match the lighting of say the background, you can see exactly what it's looking like as you move the lights. It also has real 3D motion blur. So if I turn the motion blur on for the comp, you can see that we get some real 3D motion blur and it's very responsive. So the speed doesn't get slowed down that much by turning it on. Now, another thing you'll notice is that Element can handle some pretty high quality models. This is a 100,000 polygon model and it's looking really good. It has 4K textures, so it's pretty impressive and it doesn't seem to be slowing things down a bit. So we'll go and hit OK and let's jump into another example. Another great feature is the 3D fog. So if we go to the render settings, we can turn the fog on and we can adjust the distance the fog starts and we can also set the range for how far the fog goes. You can control the color and do some really cool stuff. So it's great for motion graphics, but it's also great for making things look like they go off into the distance. Now, another really important feature is depth of field. So we'll go and turn that on. Now, the one thing about depth of field is that it does slow things down a little bit but in most cases, you wanna turn it on at the end when you're ready to render. But the cool thing is that it actually interacts with the focus distance of the camera, so you can control it just by changing the camera settings. The other nice thing is that we've actually built in a couple of different depth of field modes. So if we go in there, we can see the pixel blur and the multi-pass are a little bit slower, but they look the most accurate. And then we also have the preview and the continuous blur, which are a lot faster, but not as accurate. So you can use those while you're previewing and just get a sense for what the depth of field is going to look like. Let me show you another great feature. So here we have this chess set and it looks pretty good, but the shading is really flat. So let me add it into our scene and we'll come down to the render settings and you'll see we have ambient occlusion built in. So we'll open that up and we'll turn it on and you can see we instantly get a more realistic look. And you can see we're still getting amazing performance. So this is a really great look to make things look a lot less like the 1990s. Um, we can control the radius here, so we can make it you know, like really tight or really soft. And we can also control the intensity. So really cool feature for making things look good without slowing you down. Now, while we're in this project, let me show you something in the lighting tab. So if you look at my project, I don't have any lights in the scene. But what I do have is this additional lighting option. And this is a great way to experiment with different lighting setups without having to add them all in manually yourself. But what's great is you can actually add additional lights on top of it. So I can say add a spotlight here and uh, let's see, we'll turn it up here and we'll hit OK. And we'll move it closer into our scene. And you can see we're getting some great responsiveness from this additional lighting. So it's great for just putting those final touches on your shot. Now, while we're in this project, let me show you a couple of other rendering modes. So if we go to the output here, we have a couple of polygon modes. So right now we're looking at the polygons, but we can switch this to wireframe. And this is a great way to just see some different, you know, abstract looks, you know, for motion graphics. We can also switch it to point cloud to see a bunch of dots. All right, let's take a look at some of the multi-pass output modes. So here we have this missile and we want to add a glow specifically to the afterburn area. But if I were to say add a glow on top of my project, well, what would happen is the glow would come out of everywhere. So we want to be able to isolate just that afterburn area. Well, Element has some great features for doing just that. So here's the base project here with our missile. And uh, again, you can see it renders quite fast. So here we have our base scene and you can see that everything still renders quite fast. And what we can do is come over to Element and in the Output tab, we can change it from the Composite to Illumination. And what that does is creates an output specifically for that area. So here's what we can do. 
we can duplicate the element layer. So we'll choose duplicate and then we'll set the output of the copy to illumination. And then we can add a glow to that specific area. So if we choose stylize glow, we can turn this up a little bit, maybe change the color. See here. And what's great is we can add the glow specifically to this part of the image. And then we can composite it back on top by changing the transfer mode to add. And we can unsolo that. And then we can just increase the intensity of the glow, change the radius, and it's looking really nice. Let me show you another amazing feature. So we're gonna jump back over to the helicopter project. Now I just showed you, we can change the output to any of the different channels. So we could look at a Z pass, we could look at just the reflection pass and composite that with you know a blur or some other effect. But what I'm gonna do is just leave it on composite because what we have built in is a multi-pass mixer. And what this allows you to do is dynamically mix the different channels together so we can increase the reflectivity of the windows or we could turn the specular amount up all by itself and maybe turn the diffuse down. So it's great for getting that final tweak without having to go into all of your shaders and adjust the materials. We give you access to all that stuff in one place so you can make your composite look perfect. All right, my name is Andrew Kramer. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out the other feature videos and we will see you next time.